Hello everyone, so let's go ahead and go through anatomic structures on this panoramic radiograph. There's so many structures to go over, right? So let's just go through kind of structure by structure uh, as best as we can. Um, right here, why don't we just start from here? Angle of the mandible, right? Condylar neck, condyle, and makes this glenoid fossa and articular eminus. And here's a sigmoid notch and coronoid process anterior border of the mandible or ramus and the uh, external oblique ridge and um, here's obviously the crest of the alveolar process and if you look inside this area we can uh, find the mandibular canal the inferior border is better seen and at about here we kind of lose it uh, largely because of not only the radio density of the trabecular bone, but in this case prim primarily because of this radio opaque structure. If you've been regularly watching my video, I'm going to start answering some of the quiz questions that I made and this is my way of um, knowing that uh, you've been watching some other videos, not just the required quiz questions. So. If you're not sure <laughs> on some of the quiz questions, start watching my other videos and you'll be able to uh, get the answers. In this case, um, this structure that we see, uh, some of you, to some of you, this may be very apparent, but some of you may not be. As a matter of fact, I have been called to clinic to uh, find out, or to answer what this is for, the, uh, for our student doctor as well as the overseeing clinician. So this one is actually hyoid process or hyoid bone excuse me so this is hyoid bone I've heard things like um, clavicle I think that's very common answer so clavicle uh, it's that's not true this is hyoid bone and I think most people say that because how big it appears right um, keep in mind there could be tremendous amount of magnification depending on its location relative to the source of radiation um, yeah, let's follow through. So this is inferior cortex of the mandible. Again, angle, posterior, border, neck, condyle, sigmoid notch, coronoid process, anterior border, and zygomatic, uh, and external oblique ridge. And we can see a very thin cortical outline of the mandibular canal. Let's now move to uh, the maxillary area. Why don't we just start from here? So maxillary tuberosity and obviously the crest. And between the central incisor, we're seeing nasopalatine for ramen. Just above that, you can see the soft tissue out outline of the nose. And in this area, where the heart palate and then the nasal septum, they all come together. You're looking at anterior nasal spine. So this is heart palate, and that is heart palate. And here it is, the maxillary tuberosity. So at least on this radiograph, just beneath the heart palate, or uh, on this radiograph, I may not be speaking anatomically. Um, here's the lore of the maxillary sinus. It appears to kind of scallop around the root APCs. And if you've watched my previous videos, you will see that this line represents zygomatic process of the maxilla. Again, zygomatic process of the maxilla. And from there on, you can basically trace the inferior border of the zygoma. So here's the zygoma. And it's difficult to see where that suture is. If I had to guess, it would be right around here. So that would make this not only the zygomatic arch, but this would be um, zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Presuming that's the suture that I'm seeing. So zygomatic arch and articular eminence. Likewise, zygomatic process of maxilla. Here's the inferior border of the zygoma. And we lead into zygomatic arch and articular eminence. Obviously, this is a nasal septum. Oh, since uh, we were right here, uh, might as well just kind of finish uh, some structures that we see. 
so here's the posterior border of the sinus posterior border of the sinus and just posterior to that you're going to see uh, sometimes they call it inverted tear shaped I don't always see them as tear shaped but this tiny little uh, slit of space if you want to call that that's the pterygomaxillary maxillary fissure maxillary fissure and um, uh, so sorry I think I got a little disorganized so uh, there you go so this is where we were right so that's the inferior border of zygoma which means this whole area is zygoma again we don't exactly see the precise border of the zygoma but on this radiograph we can see relatively well I should say uh, from previous peer review again part of the zygoma forms the lateral border of the orbit as well as the inferior border of the orbit which means then this is the inferior border of the orbit or the lateral so border of the orbit we can see that bilaterally and if you pay close attention along the inferior border you can see there's a channel that appears to extend out of this inferior border that's better seen here versus the this side it's not as well visualized but that's the infraorbital foramen infraorbital foramen slash canal uh, again, uh, we've identified the maxillary sinus. A couple other things that I want to mention is that um, right in this maxillary sinus area, I wish I can adjust the contrast, but I'm unable to because it's a JPEG. You are seeing this somewhat linear radio opacity. Do you see that right here? That's as best as I can trace right about here as well. I hope you see that border. That's, those are turbinates, uh, in this case uh, inferior turbinates and if you look above you can see another linear line that extends kind of anterior posteriorly and those are middle turbinates. A couple more things, this may not be the best example but typically uh, for the posterior end of the heart palate so that you know if this is anterior natal spine that makes it posterior uh, natal spine you're going to see um, kind of soft tissue that drapes downwards okay so that's soft palate which means just below that that's the border of the tongue this line represents the border of the tongue and this whole radiolucent zone represents the upper airway and depending on how you uh, segment the upper airway uh, you, that can be divided into nasopharynx and oropharynx or nasopharyngeal airway and oropharyngeal airway all right um, let's see so we are also seeing epiglottis right here and that structure is different from this hyoid bone look at the angulation so that's epiglottis again the airway obviously the cervical spine um, and let's see I think we did a pretty good job of covering this there's always some structures that I forget to mention or it's better seen on other panoramic radiograph but uh, that's pretty good all right um, that's it for me and I will see you again in the next video take care well actually I'm going to actually give away more and more quiz question here um, so if you look right here you may be wondering what these are uh, if you didn't see that um, you need to do a better job of looking at structures outside of just the dentition so that was actually the first thing that I noticed uh, when I looked at this panoramic radiograph because it's not commonly seen on our panoramic radiograph obviously this was taken from another office outside of school and um, I'm not sure what your differential is going to be but just note that this is a very geometric uh, circular structures that I can easily come up with any of normal anatomic structures so I know this is not of normal anatomy but something else that's been kind of imaged on this uh, radiograph so if you think about what could this be um, what's going to help you is that not only the circular structure there is a kind of linear 
line that extends superiorly. This border is fairly well visualized. It's kind of hard to see where that posterior border is, but I hope you can all see this linear border. Although not as well visualized, you can see that as well. So what could this be? Well, these are head positioning device. right? So when you put the patient into the machine to properly position the patient head, these devices are used. So that's they are. That's what they are. All right. Now that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.